All right, so today I wanted to let you know that this is pretty much your last chance to buy a snake from me, pretty much for the next six months at least, I'm thinking. You know, this is actually 2020 and everybody knows what's going on in 2020. I really can't go into details here on this video because if I mention certain keywords, YouTube actually picks them up and will demonetize my videos. And as a matter of fact, I went through and deleted some videos. I was actually talking about what's going on and some of those videos that I've been watching, sometimes they get deleted like midstream that kind of freaked me out you know I pretty much make a living here on YouTube and breeding reptiles so I didn't want to cross the line into some questionable content on my channel so I can talk about it but I just can't mention the certain words and we're pretty much up to the deadline as a matter of fact today I went over to FedEx and uh, uh, shipped some snakes out I shipped four snakes through FedEx and when I went over to shipyourreptiles.com they actually had a little blurb on there that said in the coming weeks the FedEx service may be interrupted because of what's going on and that kind of spooked me I think I'm just gonna sell through this week and then the last shipping date that I'm gonna ship is gonna be March 23rd 2020 I'll ship on that Monday and if you're interested in snake I'll actually I'll actually give you 10% off all the way up to the, the the deadline as a matter of fact if you bought a snake and you still owe on that snake I'll give you 10% off and and kind of help you see if we can work some kind of a deal to where I can ship that snake. Maybe you can pay me later or something like that. But I definitely want to get these snakes out before that deadline hits. And, you know, actually over in certain areas I've heard in other parts of the world, they have actually shut down some shipping services, which kind of freaks me out. I really don't want to ship a snake and then have it stuck somewhere on the back of a truck or in a facility for a long term. That would be nerve wracking. So I'm pretty much just going to cut it off this upcoming Monday and I also have some dubia roaches if you're interested I actually have an explosion of dubia roaches as a matter of fact today I shipped out about a hundred roaches and I sell them in box of 50 for $50 I sell 25 males and 25 females and for the $50 that includes the box and the shipping and everything I'd say probably half of the cost it probably cost me $25 for the box and the deli cups and the heat pack and the postage and the shipping and everything so so you're getting like, I'd say, you know, realistically, you're probably getting 50 Dubia Roaches for $25, plus the shipping and the materials and everything on top of that. So it comes to 50. And I'll actually, um, I'll actually probably pick out my biggest Dubia Roaches. I definitely need to cut down on my colony. I have way too many. and I don't want to carry them through this whole, uh, the period that we're going into. So I definitely, I, I'd say I probably have another 10 or 12 boxes of 50 that I could actually ship out I'm hoping to get some of those out so if you're interested in some snakes or some doobie roaches I'll sell them through this week and ship them out on Monday the 23rd of March 2020 and what I want to do today is I want to show you some of the snakes that I have for sale as a matter of fact I went over to morph market and I have 14 snakes left that I'm selling and I want to just do a quick show and tell kind of just run through the snakes really quick and show you what I have that is available this week all right, so I'm gonna start with my hatchlings from last year, and this one is Fluffy. Fluffy is a male. Uh, he's a pastel, 100% het desert ghost, and of course he is in shed a little bit, kind of faded out, and if you've never seen the, the visual desert ghost with the pastel in it, it is like no other snake, probably one of the brightest yellow snakes, and the cool thing about the desert ghost is they don't fade as they get older like some pastels. You know, normally just a regular pastel Pastel will kind of brown out as it gets older, but if you have desert ghost in the mix, it's almost fluorescent. Even as an adult, it is really fluorescent. Probably one of the best combos you can get. And this guy is really interesting. He's getting really big and chunky. He is eating, pretty much all my hatchlings are eating a mixture of different rodents. I feed rats and mice. I do live uh, fresh killed with CO2 and uh, frozen thawed once in a while. It really just depends on what I have. As a matter of fact, moving forward, I'm I'm really going to reduce my number of live rats and I'm going to go mostly towards frozen thawed because I really want to cut down on the amount of rodent food that I actually have to go through and I have a lot of rodents in there. I, have, I, have a, I pretty much just have a whole rodent freezer that I use for my rodents and it's packed full so I'm not really worried about rodents going into this and the, the cool thing about ball pythons is they don't really need a lot of food compared to other pets. I actually had one adult ball python that went a year and a half without 
solid food. They are incredibly resistant to not getting that much food. So if you have a problem and you can't feed your ball python, I would say going up against what we're headed to right now, there's not really that much of an issue. They are pretty much bulletproof when it comes to food. But I'd say you probably want to feed them, you know, at least at least probably every other week just to keep them going, kind of maintain the weight. These guys, I, I feed them every week. Sometimes I feed them multiple times a week. That's why they're really big and beefy. And starting out really beefy like this, I can almost guarantee if you didn't feed this guy for about three months, he'd probably, you know, trim down and look like normal. This guy's really super nice. All right, so this one is Spot, and Spot is actually a Lemon Blast, which is a pastel pinstripe. Also has the Enchi. I didn't even know I had Enchi in my Desert Ghost stuff until I actually popped this guy out, and you can definitely see the, the pattern is reduced. I actually have him listed as possible Enchi, but looking at all my other Lemon Blasts, this is definitely an Enchi because it reduces the pattern. This one's also 100% head Desert Ghost. As a matter of fact, if nobody buys this, I will probably Probably breed this back to my female. Uh, I actually have a female pastel spider desert ghost visual that I'm breeding with my other desert ghost this year and hopefully I can actually get pinstripe and some more enchi into that desert ghost which would be really awesome. This guy is really cool. This is a male and the funny thing about this one is it seems like he has a brighter pastel in with the lemon blast. Sometimes you can see you know some lines of pastel are a lot brighter. This one is like Super bright, almost glowing yellow. Really awesome snake. All right, so this one we named Snuggles. Snuggles is a male. This one is actually 100% het albino, 100% het pied. I bred my albino pied to some other stuff, and this one didn't get any other genes, but it is, did get, uh, we're 100% sure that it actually has the uh, the het albino and het pied. Look at the belly tracks on this one. You can see really beautiful het pied markers all along the belly. Usually, uh, the, the you know, if you, if you have a het pied, sometimes you can actually see kind of the belly tracks along the belly and it almost looks like someone took a sharpie and drew a line on either side of the belly giving you these beautiful tracks on the belly that is really awesome and the funny thing is, is when these guys the, the double heads were younger it seemed like they're really snappy and aggressive and now that they're a little bit bigger they're really super friendly but they eat really well look at how chunky this guy is this guy is almost borderline overweight he's eating so much this guy could probably fast for a long time and get down to a decent size. These are really awesome snakes. And it's kind of funny when I first hatched out these double head albino pides that didn't seem like they were selling very well and now it seems like they're just flying off the shelves. I don't have many of them left. This is a really awesome looking snake. All right, so this snake we named Peewee, and Peewee is my last coral glow of the season. I actually had quite a few of these, and it seems like the, the, the less coral glows I get, the more people kind of fight over them at the end, trying to get the last ones. And coral glows are really awesome. It's actually a co-dominant morph, so you can actually breed it to something. Half the offspring come out coral glow, and you can also produce a super coral glow if you breed two of them together. If you happen to find a female, the females are kind of hard to, to track down and they're usually pretty expensive. This one's actually a male maker. So the, the issue with this one is if you're looking for a female, you probably won't get it out of this one. This one you actually breed to something and all the, the coral glow offspring from this one will all be males. I actually have a male maker and I have yet to produce a female. I've produced quite a few coral glows. And it's kind of interesting, they get these little spots the older they get, just as the base gene. and and the parent on this one, I'd say it probably didn't really have any more spots than this one. I would say it probably won't get really, some of them get a lot of spots. I'd say it probably won't get as much more spots than this. I think this is like the perfect amount of spots where you can see little tiny freckles through the snake, but it doesn't kind of overwhelm the beauty of the snake. Really awesome coral glow. 
All right, so take a look at this one. This is Electra. Electra is a male. He is 100% head pied, 50% head caramel albino. Really awesome snake. So being head pied, if you actually bred this to a visual pied, half the offspring would come out as visual pieds, which would be pretty cool. Or if you bred two head pieds together, you could actually get, I think it's 25% of the time you'll get a visual pied. And on this one, you can definitely tell right on the tail, right down here, you can see some really nice belly tracks. Usually the head pied has two strong tracks right down by the vent. Sometimes they'll actually go up into the belly like this. Really awesome snake. And let me tell you, this guy's been eating really well too. This guy is really big and beefy. All right, so this one we named Sunshine. Sunshine is a spider. Look at how beautiful this is. The spider is probably one of my favorite standalone morphs. And this one's actually 100% head pied, 50% head caramel albino. So this came from the same clutch as the last one, but it got the spider gene as well. I actually had, I actually bred a spider pied to that female, and that's where the spider came from. And if you actually take a look at the head, you know, a lot of people are kind of interested in kind of seeing if there's any kind of a head wobble on these. I haven't really seen any head wobble on any of my spiders. I'd say maybe just a little in some cases, but I haven't really noticed like any kind of a severe head wobble or corkscrewing or anything on these spiders. Really awesome looking snake. And if you take a look at the belly, the belly on spiders is usually pretty clear. And this guy's been eating really good too. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm going through and cleaning out all my rat racks and trying to really reduce everything and uh, trying to feed my snakes as heavy as possible going into the season. All right, so here is another brother of the last two. This is essentially exactly the same as the last one. This one we named Cobra. And Cobra is, it's actually not a cobra. It's actually a spider ball python. It's also 100% head pied, 50% head caramel albino. Really awesome snake. I have some really awesome spiders this year. I, I produce just a limited number of spiders because some people have been asking me, you know, who has the spiders? Where can I get a spider from? Probably one of the most beautiful morphs that there is. All right, so this one we named Raven. Look at how big and beautiful Raven's getting. I can't even believe how fast these snakes grow. It's pretty amazing. This is actually a Lemon Blast, which is the pastel pinstripe. It's also 100% head desert ghost. And look at how bright the yellow is on the sides. This is a really beautiful snake. And if you can kind of compare it to that one where we had the Enchi in it, you can definitely tell the Enchi really reduced the pattern. This one definitely does not have the Enchi. And if you compare them side by side, you can definitely tell the other one had Enchi. Really beautiful snake. And usually on a lemon blast, the bellies are pretty clear. Really nice looking snake. Really big and beefy too. Awesome. All right, so take a look at this one. This one we named Cupcake. Cupcake is a male scaleless head. And you can see on the very top of his head, he just has a few scales missing from the very top of his head. If you actually breed two scaleless heads together, you get a completely scaleless ball python. And the funny thing about this one is Cupcake was actually really struggled at the beginning when this one was a hatchling. And as a matter of fact, I marked the tub because I almost thought I was gonna have to assist feed it. it was kind a leg and behind all the other snakes was a lot smaller and you can definitely see that all of a sudden you know you get a few meals into them and they just grow like a rocket once they start eating food they get nice and big and beefy there's no problem at all usually once you get them to the point where you can actually get some food into them and at this point this guy will eat anything <laughs> you can definitely tell by his size all right, I decided to put this girl up for sale, and if she doesn't sell, I'll probably breed this one. This is actually a lesser pied female. Really awesome snake. And shes I, th I think the last time I weighed her, she's a little over 1,500 grams, but she's still really long and lanky. You probably want to get a few more meals into her before you actually breed her. I like to beef them up a little bit more. And the funny thing about the lesser pied is that they actually have smaller eyes than usual. If you take a look at the eyes on this, 
this one. You can see it's kind of like almost micro eyes. This is actually a blue eye too, which is kind of interesting because it's not really a blue eyed leucistic per se because it has the lesser gene which is in the blue eyed leucistic, but it's also a pied. And this one, I, I th I'm, th I'm pretty sure this one has some spider in it as well because I think there's a little corkscrewing in the head. It does really fun, really good if it's flat on the ground, but if it actually picks up its head, you know, and you kind of dangle it, it kind of corkscrews a little. And, you know, the spider is kind of interesting because if it does have spider in it, usually it's not transferred to the offspring. Uh, I actually had some questions about that. If you actually have uh, a spider that has a little bit of a head wobble and you actually breed it to something that, you know, most people would say that they're the same odds as breeding a spider with a non-head wobble to something else. So I wouldn't be really too concerned about the head wobble if you bred it, or this would make a really fantastic pet, really bright white snake, really awesome. All right, so this one's kind of interesting. This is another white snake, but it's a spider pied, what we call a white wedding. The white wedding is actually, normally with the spider pies, you have a little bit of color on the head. This one is an all white snake. This is also a female, not quite up to breeding size. You need a little bit more size on this one. And the funny thing about this one is if you look at the eyes on this one, it almost looks like it's got bigger than normal eyes compared to most snakes. So you went from one with small eyes to another with the big eyes. It doesn't affect the, 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 you know, the vision of the snake at all, but they are really beautiful snakes, these all white snakes. This is really awesome. All right, so take a look at this snake. This is a female jungle woma spider. This is one of my very first snakes. As a matter of fact, she bred for me the very first year. I had a clutch of eggs, and I couldn't tell which ones had jungle woma. And a jungle woma is, is a pattern reduction. It's really super slight. And the guy that I bought this from actually bred it to another jungle woma and produced a super jungle woma, which is known as a ridgeback. And the ridgeback, you can definitely see it's really reduced down on the top. This one actually was actually sold to me as a mouser only and the first couple years she only would eat mice like frozen thawed mice and this year I finally got her on live small rats so you can actually go back and forth between the live small rats and the frozen thawed mice or you could probably just chew mice and you know she eats pretty well so you can actually probably get her up to breeding size this year. She's probably a little bit too thin for breeding right at the moment but I think you could get her up to size if you used a lot of mice. Look at how big she is. She's really super long. Has really nice white coming up the sides too. Really beautiful. All right, so this is a really big spider pied male. And you can see this usually on the spider pied has a little bit of color right on the head. And this guy has a little bit of a stargaze. <laughs> he's just a little bit off on his head. You can definitely tell he's kind of got the little bit of corkscrew going. Not too bad though, he eats really well. You can definitely tell he's really super big. You can tell his belly's kind of pink. <laughs> Looks like he's starting to go into his shed. And this guy, it's kind of funny. This is the only ball python that really bit me, took a bite out of me and hung on for dear life, missed the rat and hit my hand. And it's kind of interesting, he has a couple little freckles right there on the side, like really big freckles. I don't have any mites in my collection, if you're wondering. You see some of these freckles on some of these snakes and you're always, you know, kind of leery about mites. I haven't had mites. Actually, I did have a mite infestation in my collection when I first started and it took forever to get rid of it. Now I am super rigorous in getting rid of the mice. But look at how big and beefy he is. Really awesome spider pine. All right, so here is my last snake that I want to show you. This is Big Red. He is a corn snake. One of my few snakes that's not a ball python. Looks really awesome. And the, the funny thing is, I brought this guy to a lot of shows and I'd let him crawl across the display case. He's really long, so he'd crawl, you know, all the way across and people would kind of freak out that I had a snake out of the display on my display cases. He's pretty awesome. So many people handled this guy. And it's got, I actually bought this from the pet store when I was interested 
interested in doing a video and comparing corn snakes and ball pythons. And I did that video, you know, I actually bought this snake just for that video. It was my very first corn snake. I never actually had one. Don't really plan on breeding them. And I kind of want to focus just on the snakes that I'm going to breed. This would make a fantastic pet. He's really super friendly. Never even tried to take a bite. Just so friendly. He's a little bit squirrely kind of going all over the place. But other than that, he's a really awesome snake. Alright, so it is time for the question of the day. And Slither is two asks, if you breed two high white pines together, does that affect the appearance of the offspring? And that is a very good question. Essentially what a pine is, it's a recessive mutation and you have actually these patches of white through the snake. Sometimes you have a lot of white, which is a high white pine. Sometimes you have just a little bit of white we refer to as a low white pine. And I've actually heard a lot of people over on the reptile forums say that it doesn't really matter if you start with a high white or a low white, you pretty much get a mix of different different high whites and low whites is pretty much unpredictable. Although I have seen people breeding two separate high white pines together and get a whole clutch of high white pines. So I think the jury is still out on that one. I haven't quite figured out what's kind of going on there with the high white and the low white. I'd say you probably have better odds starting with high white for breeders versus low white, but I've seen some people that'll kind of argue just the opposite. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.